Okay, so now I have reloaded the first file that you got when you downloaded for these sessions here. So we have no material, no nothing except some light and some HDRY inside. And that's good because now I can show you the different tools and technique to mask things out here. And what we need to mask are things like uh, edges and we need to know what's up and down and so on because you know when it rains it comes from the up and go down here and uh, smudge will be somewhere here and uh, the dust will be collected on some places and so on. So we need to have some techniques to, to manage to find all those places. And in this session I will show you how you can use something called Vertex Paint. And as you can hear the name Vertex Paint means that it works with the vertices. So uh, with many vertices you will get a good result. And uh, with a low amount of vertices mm, it will not be so good. So uh, you should work with a high poly model in this technique and uh, as I said in the beginning most techniques is really good to work with with high poly models. So have high poly and you will get a splendid result here. Uh, let's start with it. I will just select the base here and create the material for it. So I go down here to material properties and select new. And now I have the base here and we can go to vertex paint. So I go from object mode to vertex paint. And now you can see that this part here is much brighter because that is in focus right now and that is what we are going to work with. Okay, so uh, here we have different tools that we can use. Uh, the normal draw tool, we can blur things out, we can make them more average and we can smear things. So those tools we have in our toolbox for the vertex paint. And the vertex paint toolbox you can find in tool here. So here we can also see that you don't use just a draw, you can add, darken, lighten, mix, multiply and subtract. So you have a lot of tools to work with here. You can also put in some radius and strength and you can use the F key if you want to uh, change the radius when you are working with it, when you are painting here. So that you can do. And then you have the color here. And right now it's white, so when I paint something here you don't see it because it's white. I can change it to red, of course, uh, but you still don't see it when I paint. And that is because we are not telling the material that we are using vertex paint. So we need to tell the material we did up here, uh, we are using vertex paint, uh, show it, please. And to do it, first of all, we then go to the object data properties. And here we have a lot of groups and one of those are vertex colors. So. We can create a list here. We have the option here to create not just one, we can create two or three or four uh, different types of layers that we can use here. So uh, we can use the vertex paint here to mask out things like uh, this part here should have rust but not this part and so on. And that is really good because then we can uh, isolate different things but the thing here is of course that you need to name it so we know what we're working with so i uh, double click on it and i can call this for dirt mask like this and then we have a name and we need to put that name in here and we have two ways of doing it uh, the old way is if i now press shift a go to input is to use the attribute node so in the old days, we can do it still, then you use the attribute and you just write the name here, exactly as it is here. So I write now dirt mask and I can put the color into the base color here. And as soon as I do that, you can see that, okay, I painted here and you can see in real time when I paint stuff, uh, it get painted here and it uses this here. And since we are going to do realistic stuff here, we are not going to paint it well with red or something like that. We use just black and white. So uh, in most cases here, it will be some type of grayscale that we will use. The other way, if we don't use the attribute, 
is a little bit easier. So press Shift A again, input, and here we have something called vertex color. And vertex color and vertex paint mm, sounds about the same because it is, as you can see, it says vertex colors here. But here we don't have to write anything. You can just select in this list and here you can find all the vertex colors that you've done. Right now we have only one, so we can select dirt mask and we can put that into the color here. And you see no difference without and with. So this is uh, the newer way to do it, the lazy way. And we don't need the attribute right now, so we can take that away uh, to make uh, this thing. And what Vertex Paint is really good at is that it can calculate where all the dirt are or dirt is collected. So all those places that is hard to reach, where we can't reach it because uh, we have two edges that are close to each other or something like that, uh, that is the place where we will add some uh, smudge and so on. And that will Vertex Paint calculate for us. In the Paint uh, menu here, you see we have a lot of stuff here. And uh, one is of course Set Vertex Color. And we can start with that one. So we start with adding uh, zero here. So we can go down here and see. So everything is one again, because I would like to reset this. So I get to Paint and I then set Set Vertex Colors and now everything is white as it should be. After that, I can go to this paint menu again, and I can select a dirty vertex color. And if I do that, I get a mask here that tells us that every place with dirt will have a little darker thing here. So here is hard for us to reach. So it will then be the place to uh, collect dirt from and this will be the same, and that will be the same, and so on. So all these places that it's, yeah, it's really hard to reach. Those places uh, will then be the place where all the dirt is collected. Uh, that is one rather big drawback that I feel when I work with this, and that is that it's a fantastic instrument, something very easy to work with, but uh, it's very, yeah, it's only one object at a time. So I cannot select all of these in one time and then just go to paint and say dirty vertical color and everything will be fixed. I need to select them one by one by one. So it takes some time to do it uh, if you have a lot of small pieces here, but it, it uh, it's worth it. So. Normally you just double click and then uh, copy. So you have the name, pressing Ctrl C or something. And then you have to go out again to object mode and uh, select that one. And that we can do by this. So we can go into uh, color material. We can select everything except the base and then Ctrl and base and Ctrl L and material and now we have that on everything and you can see that everything is black and that is because we don't have any vertex paint on it so then we have to take it one by one so okay i take this part here and go to vertex paint and i go to paint and i select the, the vertex colors and i go to object data properties find it double click uh, Control V, so we uh, paste the name in here, and now I have it there. And then I have to go back again, object mode, select a new one, and you know the, the drill now. So then go to vertex paint, uh, double click, and put in the new name, and then you have that in here, and so on and so on for each of these parts here. I will not do it right now for each part since this is just a demonstration uh, but uh, you get the you get the idea and if you have forgotten to do that on some part you can see because it's red up here so if I now select go to object mode and I select like that part you can see it's red 
And the reason that it's red here is because it can't read dirt mask. That does not exist. So then you know that, okay, something is missing, and then you have, go, have to go to Vertex Paint and do this uh, thing again that I did right now. So, uh, but if we now look at the result here, it's rather nice. You can easily see, okay, so this is the, this is the place where all the dirt is collected and that we can then use to play with to add all that smudge that we should have in our um, lantern later on. So uh, that is uh, vertex colors and uh, it's really good to have and it's really nice result but have two negative things. The one is you really need a high poly model to make it work and two you can only take one object at a time to make it work so it's a little bit time consuming to to do it for your complete uh, model here if you have small parts but you can see what we can do with it i think so this is vertex paint vertex color and then i will show you the next technique in the next session so i just say bye for now and see you in the next session